All right, hello. Hello, friends. How's it going, Eric? Funky, hello. Happy Easter. Breno, hello, sup. ODM, Harry Smallwood, hello. Codebra, what's up? What's good? Um, who else is here? Um, Della Cass, hello. Nico, hello. Juan Tagon, Kibiosis, how's it going? Hello, hello. How are you guys doing? All right, so today pretty chill. Um, we're just gonna put together a heavy grail. Um, so we've done this before, but um, I don't get Toper builds too often, so it's uh, it's nice to have a change. So let's get to it. All right, it's a nice day to go out and touch grass. That's true. Um, yesterday was kind of windy, but today is actually pretty pretty nice. Um, so I do agree with that. Windy also today? Oh, okay. That's fair. Alright. But temps are nice? Yeah, that's true. That is true. Actually, what's the... Oh, yeah, it's pretty nice out right now. Yeah, a little windy, but eh, it's not too bad, actually. Barely cloudy. All right, so I guess let's get started. Um, let's unpack stuff. So here I got our loop that we're gonna use in a bit. I guess this is gonna be the plate, if I recall. Perfect for hunting eggs. Oh, Easter eggs. That's true. We got our file and the screws. You guys got any plans for the day? For, or for Easter weekend, rather? I don't know. Some people really always make plans for every weekend. I'm not that type. So I tend to just kind of go along with the flow, depending on what's, what's there to do. Alright. We got a white late today cooking beef bur Guignon. How the fuck do you spell it? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but that sounds great. Um, my partner and I yesterday, we cooked some... We pressure cooked some um, pork tongue. Really yummy. Um, basically, just toss in a bunch of aromatics. Um and high pressure cook on an instapot and it was really yummy on rice and put some vegetables on the side really good stuff that sounds awesome yep it was pretty good all right, and we got our HKB Pro Classic. So this is gonna be our standard 45 gram. So this is completely stock right now. Um, we can test the board first before we do any kind of disassembly. And then, yeah, 
That's just a cable for it, and it's included. So HHKB. And white. And let's see what we got for our Harry Grail today. So it comes in this really large box with a lot of them. Ooh, we got aerospace aluminum today. Sick. Had I don't remember before what colors I've done. Um, I actually don't. I actually often forget um, what colors I've done before. But yeah, this is the aerospace one. It comes with this nice folio, which is just kind of like an auth card. Pretty nice. Um, but just to keep it around. Um, I believe this should be hardware. I might have already done Aerospace Aluminum. I actually don't remember. We got our Allen key and screws. We got the bump bonds. And the case with foam. Take it out of the box. Beautiful. Oh, this is this foam is new looking, different looking at least. Um, so we got the the gasket that goes around, and this is just the the foam, and then it has the felt at the bottom. I might take a look at the guide on how to assemble things together just in case. I always just double check. A little bit of dust there, but beautiful looking aerospace, aluminum, the silver version of the heavy grail. Very nice. Uh, USB-C port there in the back. And yeah, okay, so we should be good. Right? Is that all I need? I think so, right? Okay, cool. So let's put this back in the box. Put it aside. All right, so let's get to the first thing that I should really do is test the HKB and loop this guy. But I guess testing the HKB is the first thing to do because you don't want to... What's the point of using a board that doesn't actually connect? So let's see... Just gonna do a switch hitter here. Easy peasy. Oh, Nightwalker, hello. Happy Saturday. Backspace. Okay. Left control. Uh, win and alter switched. Wow, the space art sounds pretty good already on there. Okay, and um, function layer. Just the diamond arrows are enough to prove that it works. Alright, so the HKB itself is good. <clears throat> so, turn that off. Um, and I guess we can get the internals out later. So we let's focus on... Actually, no. You know what? I should... I'll, I'll take out the internals first. So I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is take out all the keycaps. We'll finally get a chance to go see Dune 2 tomorrow, so pretty excited. Ooh, how fun. Do you watch the first one in the, at the movie theaters? Cause in my case, me and my partner, we watched it um, just at home. Like we just streamed it. Um, but like if it's been a while since you've watched the first one, I well, actually, you know, you don't really need to know. Too much from the first one anyway, so let's, let's 
So yeah, just general context is enough. Someone make a think of the children joke yet? No. You can be the first one though, Drua. You can be the, the, the first one to make it. Okay, buddy. No? Oh. Why? But think of the children, Drua. You must protect. Why bring it up? Yeah, seriously, right? Okay. save this little spring this is just extra a little extra weight for the space bar just put it aside okay so keycaps we can just uh, maybe just put them in the bag or something it's fine it's good enough Here for some top. Yo, what's up, Rufio? How goes it, dude? How's your Saturday? You doing anything for Easter? Alright, put our keycaps aside for now. That's for the dip switches. Okay, so that's where one of the screws is going to be. We're gonna have to peel it at some point. Um, so let's first get the other two screws out. So there's just two Phillips screws right here. Clownfish, yo, what's up? Second one, and all right, time to void our little warranty seal or whatever. Crawling out of bed, watching my Saturday morning Twitch. <laughs> well, good morning to you, my friend. That's a uh, late morning start. <laughs> late start to the day. Oop. There goes the top, I mean the bottom. And you just gotta unclasp this portion here. So unclasp, then remove, and then boom, comes off the controller. Easy peasy. We're gonna have to, um, 
move that over just put it on the side and um, right now I'm not gonna bother actually taking this off but we're eventually gonna take this off so that we can get the domes as well as the sliders and we are also gonna get our stabilizer right so this for now we can just put it aside like this this is good enough put it aside now we can get to the the lubing part so the lubing part is pretty simple but for Topra you lube the plate you don't lube the domes or um, the sliders so um, we're gonna start with the Tribos 3204 for uh, all of the one use and then 205 is going to be once we get the parts, the sliders over there, the stabilizer ones are going to get 205 for the wires over here and for this um, spacebar stop, well, it's going to get 205. So I'm just going to get my 3204 over here. I like GHV4 for my Torpor stops. Oh, I see. A little thicker, I guess. I've, I've been okay with 205 personally, but um, that's because it's also what I have more of. Um, so it's easier to just stick to what I have. Also, with more practice, it's kind of more consistent for me. So, But yeah, GHV4 works. I think I've heard of some people do BDZ, which is also cool. It seems a little too thick for me, but you know, some people just do it. All right, we got a few of these micro applicators, my tool of preference for um, topre lubing. Instead of using a brush, a uh, brush is nice too. Uh, actually, a brush might be even faster in a way because you actually get to apply a lot more in a singular stroke. But I do prefer these micro applicators because uh, I can apply a more minuscule amount and um, a bit more evenly compared to a brush stroke where you do this and the first touch, the first point of contact, you, like you can get a lot kind of like smeared on and it doesn't spread as well. So I prefer micro applicators for more even spread of the lube. I love the desk mat, thanks. Yeah, the cold top desk mat is super nice. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I imagine BDZ is e easy to screw up. I, I, don't, I don't like BDZ personally. Um, could be a skill issue to be honest, but why 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 change to something that doesn't work for you, right? So, um, all right, so just get a small amount of lube on the micro applicator pad and just kind of spread it. Just so you don't get any excess. Should I miss the intro? That's a plate or mid-frame on HKB. This is the plate that comes with the heavy grill, but if you are actually lubing an HHKB, it would be this. You would take this apart and you would be lubing the top case, this frame. So this frame has the... Because in Topre, you're lubing... You're not lubing the sliders. You're not lubing these black sliders or purple ones, depending on what you have. Um, you're lubing the plate that holds the sliders. So whatever the plate is going to be at the end is what you are going to lube. So in this case, I just put this aside just so that I have the sliders accessible later on. But um, I'm going to take this apart to move over to this assembly here. So yeah. I had to buy an ultrasonic cleaner because BDC kept spreading in the wrong place on Topper Staff. Oh, oh yeah, that, that that must suck. Also, does an ultrasonic cleaner do a decent job of kind of getting rid of at least a good majority of the gunk from the from BDZ and whatnot? Because I mean, it is still like a like it doesn't fully get rid of the lube, but it just kind of gets rid of a good portion probably. Okay, so point of lubing Topre, pretty simple. I've done a, an HKB modding video before, but the simplest part is you're going to be applying lube 
you're going to be applying lube to these two corner sliders. I mean like uh, the portion of the slider that's going to be touching there on the plate. Come on, focus. Um, and so in this case, I'm using this micro applicator because it's easy to spread it a little bit more evenly. And then so just there and there. Um, so that's pretty much what I do. Ultrasonic and some heat seems to work fine for me. Okay, that's good. That's pretty good. All right, so in my case, I prefer 3204 for a light application of lube. And then when I always get more lube, I always wipe it off from the wall because there's always excess that you gather from like at the base of the pad, like the cotton pad on the applicator or if it's a brush then on the brush itself too on the bristles so i try to wipe it out the excess off so that it's as even as possible so just yeah you know, that's basically gonna be for all i suppose uh 57 of the keys or rather 58 including the spacebar one so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Gotta always keep track of what you've lubed, what you have lubed, or what you haven't. Because, like for example, on this white plate, it's rather hard to see what you have, what you haven't done. So you, it's better to be either counting or just kind of holding your plate in a way where you remember what the last one you've done is. I try to do it by just placing a finger on the on the one that I'm lubing currently or that I'm about to that way just keep track what's the consistency difference between 3203 and 3204 well so 3204 is the equivalent of 204g0 right and in the grading for for like crytox right uh the first digit is like between it's like the main medium so like the 100 series are all oils the 200 series are all greases and then the the viscosity of the fluid is indicated by an increasing um number so 3203 is going to be less viscous than 3204 and you know 3204 is going to be less viscous than 205g0 and so on and so forth um so how much as in like description wise it's kind of hard to say because it does depend on how much you apply onto the surface like how viscous it might feel but let's say assuming you're trying to be as uniform as possible i would say 32 or 3 is on the verge of like just barely applying grease onto that particular um switch or whatever it might be uh it it, it is very like it is very, it's much more subtle than um, applying 204 or 205. Like 204, 205, I think you can feel the butteriness, but 203, it's, it's, I would say it's much, a bit more subtle than that. Um, I mean, assuming that you're applying like a small amount, right? You're trying to be as uniform as possible. I don't like feeling the loop. Yeah, so if that's the case, I would say 3203 could be a good alternative. It's at least in Topra, it's gonna feel closer to stock than any other things. But also, I personally don't really love stock Topra. So for me, feeling the lube is okay as long as it's not um, sluggish, extremely sluggish. You own any Norbs? Um, I used to. Um, my first Norbauer case was a Norba Touch. Uh, I had a Norba Touch in the first three and a half years or so of the hobby, I would say. Um, I had a Nova Touch for a long time. 
and then I had the Norbit Touch case for it and the warm gray. Um, and then later on, I got rid of that at some point because um, I was moving on to other MX customs as well and I liked my HKB enough that I decided that Nor Nor Norbit Touch was not needed for me. So I got rid of that a, a long time ago. I still actually do have a Norbit Touch case, but I actually don't have a Nova Touch anymore. So for that one, I actually just have a Cooler Master, like Master Keys Pro uh, internal, so like MX internals, and uh, I keep that up. I, I keep that at work. Um, um, then I eventually got a Norbit Force when it first came out. I got one in black. Uh, I think it was Wind Key in black. Uh, I had the Norba Force for a little while, um, also enjoyed it. Um, at the time I had the 10th anniversary Real Force, um, so I put that in, put those internals into the Norba Force, enjoyed it for a little bit, and then eventually uh, decided that I didn't really love aluminum custom Topra cases as much, so got rid of that as well. Um, when the Heavy Grail came around, I never ended up actually buying it. It felt a little bit expensive, but also I kind of wanted to wait until I got to either try it out at a meetup or um, or see if I would feel convinced of getting um, any kind of like aluminum, like um, topper cases. Um, and I think since then I haven't really bought into any topre stuff that's outside of OEM. Um, mostly the reason being that it feels a little expensive. I already enjoy OEM uh, OEM Topre. So like the plastic cases for the Real Force or the plastic cases for the HKB, whichever that might be, um, I enjoy both quite a bit. And like when the, for example, like when the show cases came out or like when Noxery used to run the XRF for the EVA, I, I was tempted a few times, but um, never ended up hopping into the um, into buying any of them. So I only got to, I, I did get to try XRF and um, Heavy Grail before though, like through builds, like customer builds basically. Um, so I'm lucky for that. Um, I've tried like Heavy Six, Heavy Nine, etc. But um, I haven't purchased any for myself. I haven't purchased like Show. I was tempted getting the um, the Show HG. Uh, because it's like a nice reproduction of the of the HG um, HHKB, right? Uh, so I really wanted to. I contemplated getting that in aluminum, like in aluminum with like sandblasted. I don't really like polished anyway, so I contemplated getting that, but um, decided against it last kind of last minute. Um, I was just like, eh, I don't really want to spend the money, so didn't didn't end up spending the money. And um, yeah, that was kind of the my breakdown on Topre. I would say um, haven't really spent on aftermarket cases much because I already like the stock OEM cases. So yeah, Show HG is very good. That's my daily. Yeah, I mean I'm sure it's good. I, I've heard good things about the Show cases in general. Um, so and I mean like they've gotten better over time. I think like when compared to when they first were out. So it's good, it's good. Um, I, I really do kind of want one just for the aesthetic portion, the HG, but uh, just can't justify it. Um, it's it's It would be just pure vanity to have it, but I just haven't, I don't know why, my, my mental just kind of says like, uh, you don't need it, so pass. <laughs> so yeah, but I'll probably get to see it at a meetup or something and that's that's good enough with me. My biggest regret was selling my uh, Heavy Grail. What color do you have, um, ELH, for your Heavy Grail before? I hope I can try some more Topri stuff at KeyCon. I'm sure you'll get to, although if there is a place where you can voice that you would like to try it, I think it would be good for you to actually do that, so that post or something. Or, or comment about it so that people actually know it and they're like, oh, Captain Badass wanted to try Topri, so I'm gonna bring my Topri board. Because I think a lot of the people who attend meetups, especially those who travel further, uh, are more much more reluctant to bring heavy things, right, around with them. So Topri might be a good way to 
also mitigate that because Topra is like OEM cases are pretty light, and al aluminum only cases can also feel pretty light. So if they're not like weighted, like they don't have like too much brass or stainless steel or whatever. You really got to like the look of it? Yeah, it's very unique, the HG. It's a little slightly tacky feeling, like has a little bit of that too. <laughs> because it's kind of extravagant in terms of like that back portion and whatnot. But yeah. What's a Play-Doh plate? Non-integrated plate for the heavy grail, huh. You got any jokes? Pranks prepare for Monday. Oh, Monday. Oh, that's right. It's uh, April Fool's, huh? I have one. Where does one acquired? Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Never heard of it. Actually, someone might have offhandedly mentioned at some point in my server, but it's been a minute, so I don't remember. Had a scuffed K2 coating. Ooh, K2 is nice. K2 is the pink one, right? Pink? I really like that pink. <laughs> the the one from the one that Norba uh, would use for his for his stuff. Oh, the white one. My bad. But I like the pink one. Yeah, I forget what that one is called. Yeah, I mean, white coating for me. Eh, whatever. Um, I think, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not huge on whiteboards. I would rather silver than white, so I think that's why I don't like white as much, because I would rather silver. I didn't like it, I've gone to recode it. Yeah, fair. Oh, I think I remember where that Play-Doh plate was from. There's a, there a dude who did this, right? The Play-Doh plates. It was it was someone else developed it, right? It's the same guy who ran those um that was it? Was it some kind of custom profile? Or Topra, I forget. Ursa keycaps. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I remember I gave feedback for the Ursa stuff. Um I just don't remember the name of the person, that's why. I always forget. Andreas, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I remember giving feedback for the Ursa stuff. K2 was I. He saw it as soon as I was able to get an airspace. Yep, that's probably what I would have done too if I were in the same position. Copper plate to plate. Ooh, white. Um, or rather, if you got it recoded, oh, copper sounds nice. I actually don't know what typing on a brass topre plate is like, especially like if it's kind of like HKB, like an Evia or like a Heavy Grail, etc. I already enjoy the softer plastic. So like as it is like I don't love real force because of the harshness of the plate as much. I mean compared to HKB anyway, but um to each their own, right?
the stiff plates are peak. That's fair. It's one thing. There's there's a thing for everybody, I think. That's why I like the SRX. It softens the real force feel because it's top mount. Ooh, that sounds just right up my alley, to be honest. I might, I might look into it, but I'm. I honestly don't want to spend more into the. Into the ecosystem, so to speak. I already have cases that I like, so I'm I'm kind of good. But I think if I. If I had vanity funds there and here and there I, I can would consider but probably not the top of my priorities. Brass or copper for me? Mm. I mean brass and copper are rather similar to each other, right? Because of um because of brass's composition and the copper units they're very similar. <laughs> So yeah, there. For the amateur HKB viewers out there, what are some alu alternatives like the he uh, heavy grail um, for a stock HKB? Yep, he said it. Show S60, show snipe. Um, there is also you know heavy grail and uh, I guess EVA if there is some out there as well, right? Um. But yeah, I mean, unfortunately, Via and its association with Noxery are unfortunate. But I mean, for those who do own a unit, like it, it is out there, like it's it does exist, I suppose. But yeah, at this point, I think if you're trying to get it from the maker directly, then yeah, show probably or Heavy Grail for however many editions are left now. Yeah. Always worth checking both like storefronts and aftermarket, especially when it comes to Topre. So But Diego the zinc makes a big difference. Yeah. Zinc is an essential thing that you should consume. <laughs> At least for your diet, anyway. Yeah, Topre is not a cheap endeavor overall. Uh, I think that's just a thing with Topre. It's that I mean, it costs as much as an MX Custom at the end of the day uh, to do things. It is nice that we now have housings and sliders and domes. We basically have everything now. Um, custom PCBs, right? Like it's the world of Topre has opened up immensely in the past few years and. Like it's 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 awesome. That that's there's no doubt that it's just a completely different world now. And um not to mention I'm also very uninformed about it, um, when it comes to custom aftermarket topri options now. Like I'm I'm very, very uninformed because I have not been like an adopter. Um, I have not purchased a lot of stuff and a I don't think I've uh, I don't have experience with it also because I never really got um, got exposed to it otherwise like whether it may be product review or um, checking out stuff at meetups even then has been kind of limited I just like metal so I like some metal topri <laughs> OEM is great still. I mean, I I love uh, I love my OEM stuff.
the whole world of third party domes, housings, and sliders keeps things interesting? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. You know what case also looked really nice? The the one that uh, Holly was designing to? The horsey one, and then there's a, that, uh, that real force one that I think Chu posted to. It looked nice. Lots of good stuff out there though. Um, now that there's third party stuff, you can design cases around it. It's it's sweet. GMK slasher alphas are not gray. It's like the gray and the black are like so so close. It's a very subtle gray. Uh, I can show you, but it is a gray, but it's just really close. Um, it's also the lighting, like the lighting is gonna change everything here. Um, but yeah, no, it is gray, it is gray. Um, just, just very subtly so. I saw some renders and it's completely other thing. Yeah, I mean renders, trusting renders always can be a little dicey. Uh, I mean, it's the best you get before a product is actually made, but um, plastics are not a an easy thing because texture on plastics also affects how they look like so much. Um, so yeah. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the pigment choice, like if the color sample that was sent to, that was sent and approved for is just different, then, you know, that's what they are going to produce. They're not going to produce according to renders. They're going to produce according to the color samples that they make. Uh, it doesn't help that Jim K. Slasher was a set whose designer ghosted, um, effectively gone. Not to mention also the lead vendor project keyboard um, also uh, disappeared pretty much. Went on radio silence. So yeah, S Slasher is one of those sets that uh, the outcome, at least there, at least there is a set, but uh, many people, including myself, got shafted in the process. Uh, I double dipped to get Slasher. I paid project keyboard, did not get my money back and ended up getting it through novel keys when they rescued the project keyword sets. So quite unfortunate, but that's how it went for me. Um, at least it exists though. I think it's still arguably the best um, black, red, that kind of aesthetic um, key set in my opinion compared to other options. But um, yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, has unfortunate history to it. Uh, searching some red on black and they're nice. Jim K Redline. Oh yeah, Jim K Redline. I, I I do think it's nice too. I think Jim K Redline has a bit more a uh, bit more bluish tone to the gray. I think. But yeah, nice too. Um, at least I think I've seen some pictures. But I don't think I've seen the set in real life myself. All right, that was pretty quick. So that's all the keys lubed. Um, and I barely used any lube, as you can see. Like, it was just that top portion, very, very little. All right, now on to the next step is to get our internals. Oh yeah, and for the person who was asking about Slasher, look, lighting dependent, um, there it is. See, black and gray. It is gray though, but it is, the lighting is just, so it's, it's definitely gonna change how it looks. Yeah. It's a very, very subtle gray. <laughs> It's there though. But yeah, from the top down, it looks black because of the reflection. Um, or close to. 
Hey Lightning, just want to thank you again for the giveaway, Bower Light. Oh nice, Spacebar goes crazy. Oh nice, 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 you finally got it. I did see your post on the on the Discord, so I'm happy that you that you got it safely without any problems. That's awesome. Alright, so here comes the more risky parts of the building of this one. Um, I guess the first thing that we're gonna do is gonna take out all these um, screws, right? Nixies ended up being a great choice for it. Nice. Cherry mix blacks, don't fail. Alright, so we're gonna be removing screws, a ton of screws, always for Topre. The good thing, at least in disassembling the HHKB today, is gonna be the fact that it's fine if the domes and sliders, I mean, if the domes and um, uh, conical rings like misalign or, or, or like come off or whatever, because at the end of the day, I do have to kind of do that to align everything together for the for the heavy rail case, right? Um, so at least there's that, but if you're um, modding your HHKB normally, right? Oh, what's this? Oh wait, uh, gotta respond to this. Song that finally makes me miss that time, the, few, the 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 times I've gone to the Epic High concert. Super fun. The very good live performance. Okay, so um, when you're doing like regular HKB modding, ideally you want to undo these um, all these screws, right? And then you want to carefully flip your assembly like this, so that you remove the top housing uh, from above instead of taking off the PCB because the Right, right after the PCB is all the conical rings which are under each of the domes, and then the domes, dome sheets, and then you have the sliders uh, that are attached to the top piece. So, just want to be careful in removing this, like so. So now the domes are in place, so we can leave this alone. Okay, these we're not gonna touch, so we're gonna leave these alone. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to put it over there, safe and sound. And here we have all of our sliders. Gen 2 good? Yeah. yeah I'm, I All I listen to is old school stuff now, I guess, if you can call it old school. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and remove all these sliders because we're going to have to put them into the heavy grail plates. So I'm, I'm just going to use a spudger because it's nice and easy.
Okay, let's flip this over so that we can get all the ones that we've gone so far. I haven't listened to K-pop since Gen 2. My house is back in California. Had to sit me down to watch the Dynamite MV. <laughs> I didn't listen to my first Sugar August D song because it featured Ruichi Sakamoto. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm I'm fine with new music. I just don't follow it. That's the only problem. Or there's not a problem. It's just I'm just not in tune with it anymore. But yeah, it's the same with me. I I pretty much it's it's the last that I actually paid attention to in terms of releasing and then stop worrying about it. But I mean, I, I, I like play stuff on Spotify or whatever, for example, like a playlist. And um, and like, I'm fine with it. Just, yeah, don't follow releases or don't know who the new hotness is. Um, just not ever really keeping track anymore. Time to send you more reels. <laughs> the one you sent me the other day was pretty funny. Okay, that's all the sliders, most of them. And then these are the stabilizer sliders. So these ones you can also just pop out. They come with a wire, so you gotta make sure to get the wires. Undo it from the, doesn't matter which way you decide to undo it, but I'll just do it from the top um, and then just unclip the wire from the hook. Boom, comes right off. And now for the space bar, so you're gonna have three stabilizers, right? For the space bar, you need to unclip it from the top of the plate. So I just like to use, you can either use a spudger or something. You just press the tab here and push through. Uh, one side and then the other and boom comes right off so there is our stabilizer for the spacebar and that's it that's the top case of the HKB just put it aside do whatever you want um, so there it is okay so now that's done um, the next step is gonna be putting together 
our I mean we can loop the stabs um, first of all so it's easier to do when they're disassembled so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you can take out the wire maybe I'll get a little wipe here just to wipe off any old loop and apply some new one so I just wiped it off the wire here you may wipe off any excess over here if you want doesn't really matter Does the heavy grail come with Norbao's patented stabs that he's talking about a keycon? No, 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 no. He's I'm, I'm pretty sure that he's talking about MX stabs for that. I don't think it has to do with Tobre. So no, it wouldn't come with patented MX stabs. Tobre stabs are Tobre stabs. I don't think that'll probably change for a while. Especially because there is OEM manufacturing that's going to be consistent to that, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe he'll also quote unquote revolutionize new stabs over Tobre, but we don't know that yet. Too early to tell. <clears throat> All right, get the get the two of five here. A little greasy. Okay. Okay. All right. For this, I can just use my brush, no problem. Hey, Mr. Hubert, how are you? Love watching your older HKB streams on YouTube. Thank you, thank you. How are you doing, my friend? Alright, so for Tober Stabs, um, you can be a little generous on the loop, but maybe just not too much. Just enough so that uh, the wire doesn't like feel like it's going to rattle in there. So I just apply it to some of the contact portions in the plastic, as well as, more importantly, you better apply it onto the wire itself. Just do that. Have some keyboard chores to do, so glad to have a stream while I <laughs> to watch while I'm keeping. Nice. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, it's been busy. I've I've been pretty busy uh, with work stuff. Um, just just a lot going on. But other than that, it's been good. Keyboard stuff has been kind of slow for me. Um, not many builds uh in the queue or coming in. So in a way, it's been kind of nice uh because it also allows me to focus on other things. Uh, while doing fewer keyword things, but at the same time, you know, it's always fun to do keyword stuff, so I don't, I, I almost never mind having keyword stuff coming in, like, often. Yeah. But yeah, work's, work's been busy. I'm currently just busy prepping. Um, in my case, like, I'm working on my, on my thesis, so, yeah. Okay, so for the wire, you can be a little, a little generous on the loop. Not maybe not just not too much. I mean, especially just any portions that you think will have the space to rattle in the housing. So I usually try to just apply it towards the L bend of the wire, right? Anything that as it moves, as it shifts around the stabilizer housing, it's going to cause unpleasant noise, pretty much. Do that for both sides.
Okay, and then just place it into the socket for the to the place for the wire there. Just put it aside. Do it for the second wire as well. Okay. All right, that's done. Now the the housings for the spacebar. Also, you can lube any points of contact. Um, there is some lube left over there, so probably don't need to apply too much from the stock. But yeah, you can apply to any part point point of contact for the lube. So just one light coating is should, should be fine, 205 is pretty thick. Pretty much anywhere where the wire is gonna touch, you can apply some lube. Okay, now the wire, again, a bit more generous with the lube, especially any points of contact and especially anywhere where you might find a lot of space between the parts because that might cause ticking or rattle. Some people will like say like you could maybe just inject loop, but I prefer using a brush because it's a bit more controlled application. So you know exactly kind of what you're doing and you can kind of attack a problem if you if it arises later on or modify it as you do different builds. Is the first part of the stream, but for the heavy grill or for any other aftermarket case that allows HKB, you can just plop everything from one case to the another. Um, 
No, not in the case of, especially not in the case of the Heavy Grail, because the Heavy Grail has its own plate. So you need to transfer the sliders and the domes and the cone and the conical springs kind of separately. So no, you can't quite do that. Um, real force cases, on the other hand, are more likely to allow you to just plop in, quote unquote, assemblies because those you're using effectively the internal plate of the real force itself, of the keyboard itself, onto the case. It's just the housing that you're getting, like aftermarket. But in the case of the heavy grail, that's not the case. Like anything that involves moving the sliders over from one plate to the other, or, um, or, or like, you know, domes, like separating the domes from the rest and things like that will not be a simple transplant process. Uh, and the heavy grail is probably the most uh, exemplary um, case of that. All right, so next, just plop the wire into the hook here, and then clip. Same thing on the other side. Careful, and, oh snap, okay, hold up. Shift it a little bit for me, so just gonna be careful there, and clip. Just gonna apply a little bit of loop there that I missed. Okay, in any case, always should test these guys afterwards. So if you miss something, you can always go back to it, but you should test before you put everything, to, um, shut the case together, right? Oops, I screwed up the orientation. That's my fault. That is my fault. Here, just need to... Actually, I can probably just go back to it. Apply a loop. Just spread it. And then, now oh, I messed up the orientation, so I just go back and... Boop. There we go. Oh, wait. I keep doing this wrong. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oop. Okay, there. There we go. At least with the ha uh, heavy grill, you won't need housings from a real force since it comes with a plate. That is true. Yeah, you will need to buy separate housings. The housings are going to be like this shape, like this frame for each of the sliders. Uh, in the case of the HKB, it's integrated plate, so uh, it doesn't have separable housings but in the case of the real force it does the plate has openings for the housings and the housings are plopped into it and then the slider is plopped into those housings so yeah okay so that's that for this um you can go ahead and install the stabilizers but before i do that i'm going to go and check my um slider openings for the uh, heavy grail plate uh, because this heavy grail plate is made out of plastic and in the manufacturing process it is possible that you'll encounter some flashing of the plastic which is just like bits of plastic kind of like stuck at the ends um, that didn't come off from, like from the molding right and so um, it's just gonna you just want to even that out so there's a fine file that they include and so what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna go through each of them and maybe give it like one or a few like a couple of rotations just to kind of get rid of any extra dust, any extra um any extra dust or any extra um uh plastic that's left over, right?
So I'll just go like in circles. I mean, it's just a file, so it doesn't really matter how you you can you can obviously file it like vertically, but as long as you don't see extra material in there that's gonna cause your slider to get stuck, you should be fine. So maybe if you have like a paper wipe, you can just wipe off the extra dust so it doesn't get stuck back into the plastic again. I just realized that the build command, the classic one, is uh, replaced. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe I need to. We need to change that to cap caps, like capital letters. <laughs> aerospace, yes, aerospace silver. So wow, this song is old school, man. Now it's pretty old song. <laughs> this song, holy moly! But this is this was when it was good. gonna just use this pump air pump air blower to get rid of any extra dust okay now pop in our stabs here Space bar stab, just pop it in. And then this is gonna be our enter or shift, left shift. The wire has some clips here, so you can also lube a little bit of the point of contact there. Just if you wanna eliminate any kind of friction, but it should be fine. Okay, then do that, and I usually uh, grab some, maybe this budger from earlier will work. So, here, yeah. this budger just to clip on the wire. Same with the shift key. Just carefully grab the stab slider, plop it right in the middle. You want to just apply a little extra lube onto the clip portions, and then just plop in, plop in our wire. Done. And now, so just double check that the motion of the sliders is nice and smooth. Good enough. Um, now, the, because these are lubed, they won't like readily as easily like just slide back out with gravity only because the grease does have a little bit of static friction there. 
So just so you know. All right, and then now you can pop in your sliders. So I like to just pop in all the sliders like one by one. Just grab your slider, plop them in. I have the same air puffer thing. Yeah, I mean, I use it for like everything. <laughs> Feels like I did apply a very minimal amount of lube onto the alphas. So it might sound a bit on the lighter side for lube today, which is actually fine. Same, and my boyfriend got mad at me? Wait, why? Oh. <laughs> so he bought me a mini air duster vacuum, but air duster thingies like the electric ones are too strong um, I actually for example for camera equipment right like if you have like dust on your sensor or like in that like on the lens or something like it's much better to use these air rockets Than like put a really really strong gust of air has adjustable volume. Okay, that's fancy. That's fair. Yeah, I prefer just to use a small amount of air anyway, so usually, uh, never really got around to like thinking about buying a like the nice vacuum or electric, electric ones. A little felt unnecessary, I guess. Yeah, gentle air. Oh yeah, Kim. Uh, where in text are you again? Are you gonna get to see the uh, eclipse next week? Next next week. I'm in Dallas. Yes, nice. So nice for the people who just have the eclipse coming to them. Like, don't have to go anywhere. Uh, I'll probably be out of town to go see it, actually. Have you guys ever seen a total solar eclipse? It's kind of crazy, I heard. I mean, also, kind of need to pray to the gods that you get a cloudless sky. <laughs> Because if it's cloudy, totality literally lasts anywhere from a minute to three and a half minutes, uh, depending on how close to center you are of the path. Um, and like if you just have clouds, like it's clouds, dark, bright, done. It's, it's gone. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully no clouds, not too many at least. Are you going to see it? Uh, I'm gonna be in. I'm gonna be in Canada. Back in 2017, when we drove back, it took us twice the time because of traffic. Yeah, makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So the sliders are. Oh wait, am I missing a slider? Oh yeah, I'm missing a slider. Or rather, I think it just popped off. <laughs> a little on the loose end. Okay. There, all the sliders are installed. So the next section is gonna, um, we're gonna have to install the the PCB and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the case and open it up. <laughs> One must be careful during total eclipses. <laughs> yeah.
Also, ampersand, your top reveals are very relaxing to watch. Thank you. Oh, Dentsis, hello. How are you? I just saw you there. Unsilenced? Yeah, today's unsilenced build, though, Neko. Okay. Get our bottom case out. All right. So, just gonna double check that I'm doing the right thing. Okay. All right, Mr. Ryan, show me what you got. Okay, he disassembles everything. He puts everything together. Um, it's all done, and then he goes ahead and install just to make sure everything's okay. He just assembles a case, blah 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 blah. Talk about stuff, okay? Gasket, all right, gasket. So we install the gasket, take this guy here, and just make sure the shape is in the right place. So we got the long blocker on one side and a short one on the other. So just grab your gasket and align it with the screw holes. It is easier if you have something to kind of raise the case as well. But I might just do it like this. That exposed space bar sounds way better than I thought it would. Yeah, it actually sounds pretty good. Um, kind of pops. Like it's very, um, very obvious. Okay, so now we carefully lower our plate. Oop. There it is. Uh, make sure the gasket's all the way around. Okay, it's all good. And now, um. I believe these are our plate screws. So get our plate screws here and get our screwdriver, which I had just here, and attach just lightly for now. And we tighten once alignment is done. Slightly misaligned, so you maybe use a spudger here, and realign it. Ugh, come on, little screw, stop giving me so much trouble. There we go.
Okay, two, three more screws. Extras. Just put them back into the bag for now. Okay, so what you can do next is um, I didn't tighten very um, tightly here, so I'm just gonna go around here just to check that the gasket isn't caught in between the plate and the case here. Um, so you can use your spudger to just gently push it in place. Make sure it's not like getting pinched or anything weird, you know, just gently push it in here to the its rifle place there for on the frame. This one, for example, is a little tight. Okay, now it's, I think, good. So we can start tightening one by one. Just double check that all your screws are tightened. Just finger tight is fine. Uh, don't need to over tighten your screws at all. Just so that the assembly stays in place is the key part. So don't over tighten, just finger tight. Um, I'm out of tightness. Okay. So, and then flip it over, check again. A um, little bit of gasket exposed here, but nothing that is life changing. Okay, cool. So, now what's next here? Let's see. Okay, he adjusts all that, all good. And then it's probably time for the domes. So what we can do is we are going to, maybe I'll just grab a couple of boxes here. use boxes here to put the cases apart so it's just so that it kind of floats while you're doing this All right I'm gonna use this board as a way to sort of keep them straight All right like so so now you can see that all your sliders are there pressed in all good 
Okay, so now it's time to put our PCB. Um, there are several ways of doing this. One way is just to kind of flip it over, but gravity would push all these domes down. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to carefully lower the top of this onto the onto the PCB, but you need to be pretty careful so that you don't end up uh, pushing the dome sheets and dislodging your um, your conical springs or your or, or you know any of the parts. So you can be pretty careful about that. Um, I in my case I like to just elevate it a little bit so that I can actually see what I'm doing, where the things are going, and carefully align to the center of that. So one evident thing is going to be that all your sliders come up. And the next thing that I usually like doing is to test them. But in order to test them, you do need to tighten some of the screws um, so that the uh, PCB actually stays uh, close to the plate. So I'm going to now flip it over carefully. Make sure everything lines up. Okay, now I can actually use these boxes to kind of put this down. And now we're going to grab our case uh, H uh, PCB screws from earlier um, from the HKB disassembly and going to use it, it to attach a few of the pieces here. So usually I like doing two sides, the extremes, so I can at least not have to apply too much pressure now. And then one in the middle, closer to the middle, so anywhere is fine. Maybe a couple more, a few more, just so that the, there is moderately even pressure. the attachment so now I can actually let go and I can go ahead and apply a few more screws So that is enough to attach the, now the PCB won't come off, right? So I'm not gonna go ahead and do everything just yet because I actually wanna ch try out the, that these um, domes are actually aligned because if they get misaligned, you might hear some crunching uh, from the conical springs. So we're just gonna I think this is within the realm of acceptable. Minor amount of it here. But I think it's actually not very apparent. Yeah. I think you'll get masked when you actually type line with keycaps. So yeah, so I think it's good enough here. All right, so next thing is actually we are gonna tighten all the other screws, right? Uh, this looks so time consuming versus building a regular keyboard. It's different steps. So yeah, it is It is time consuming. 
Um, I think it's the thing about Topra is like there's a lot of parts, like a lot of moving parts. Like there's these conical springs, there's these domes, there's uh, there's the sliders, right? Like there are so many screws for this, right? For these two parts to come together. So yeah, it's 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 tedious. Um, Is there a custom controller or anything, or are you using the layouts from PFE from the dip switches? Uh, in our case, we're going to be using the controller directly from the from the HKB. Yeah. Um, I believe I'm not. I think there is custom controllers now. I mean, there are custom ECPCBs now, so I assume doing a controller for this would not be. Uh, difficult. PCB and controller combo, there you have it. Yeah, so I guess you have to purchase, um, purchase the whole thing. Which, yeah, it's an extra cost. So, personally, I find the HKB stuff to be more than sufficient. Not to mention, the HKB Pro Classic does have a... Does it have software, if I recall? Okay, so that's that. There is also YDKB, which is just the controller. Yeah, that's true. I don't know all the different options. I don't keep track. I pretty much use all my stuff OEM quite a lot. So um, I don't often bother looking into a lot of the custom options. But yeah. All right, I'm gonna check the stats too though. from the upstroke. Yeah, so I might go back. I'm not sure, I'm kind of torn. Space bar does sound pretty good though. Doesn't really feel like it's... But if this is from the upstroke, I'm not too concerned. What do you guys think? Would you find this shift to be okay? There's a bit of upstroke noise. Can always go back to it and touch it up, but I'm not sure if it will make a huge difference. This upstroke noise, I think, is just from the, just from the pushing of the. The spacebar is pretty good, though. Spacebar actually sounds pretty good, nice. It seems pretty minor to me, but I'm not very picky when it comes to this, so I. Especially not for shift and return or enter because there are keys that I don't like spam. So I think this is pretty okay. But that's it. I'll, I can always show the client, and if they're unhappy with it, I can always um, go back to it, which is not a problem. So uh, let's go with this first, um, and then okay. So he does the alignment, blah blah blah. Put screws on. And okay, next thing he will do is controller, right? Okay, so let's get the bottom case now. Go 
grab our screwdriver. It's all good? Okay, perfect. All right, so get our controller. That's just this green PCB here. The case aside. This, I believe, will just mount right here. Um, he uses those um, screws with the with the washers, right? I'm not sure if you needed the washers. Don't remember for the Pro 3 case. I don't think you do. Yeah, yeah, I think it was for the Pro 2 that needed them. Um, okay, so go ahead and grab those mounting screws for the... PCB. Grab our screwdriver and just go ahead and mount it. Yeah, orientation's good. Just double check what he's doing. Yeah, okay. I think it's a little tight, so let me take this out. Try to screw on its own. Oh, where's my air rocket? Um, 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 um. Oh, here. Just make sure that the screw is actually the right size. Uh, no, I don't think this one is. Set this one. Just double check here. Just has a very small amount of um space for it. Or uh, where are those extra screws that we had for the plate? Maybe these ones. It's a very small amount of uh, threading that actually goes through. And I don't want to risk anything, so I'm just going to do it as carefully as possible. Lots of screws, yes, lots of screws. Okay, I was just seeing if I was imagining things, whether it was like not really screwing down as well. But the thing is, it seems to be kind of tight. This threading is feeling, feels a little tight. I wonder, wonder if it's not tapped properly or something. It feels very tight. I'm gonna see if I can use this to actually tap it through carefully. Are you buying everything from Booper Sale today? Or are you leaving people with some scraps? No, I'm not buying much. Not much. Just, um, I'm probably only gonna go for like two caps. 
uh, mainly for I really want um, one of the petunias and the fang. Okay, one side is fine. Okay, yeah, it's just tight probably because of gunk or something in the thread. So I'm just very, very carefully, like basically tapping the the screw holes so that, um, and then, you know, making, just double checking that my screw doesn't have random gunk that will cause this thing to strip or break. You, you like, that's the one thing you absolutely want to avoid is for anything to, to strip, break, you know, problematic. So I'm using this screw as a as a tapping screw basically. But so that means that any kind of gunk will get stuck onto this thing, right? So you want to not use that same screw that you used to tap. Uh, that would be dangerous. So I'm going to put this aside completely. Use my air rocket to clear out any small particles. And now I can go ahead and screw down with the actual mounting screws, which I think that's why it wasn't working at first. It was because it's it just kind of tight on the bolts there. Okay, so now it screws pretty easily, or relatively easily. So you can just kind of go down on this slowly until it mounts and stops moving. The pink or teal fang goes so hard. Oh, I'm into the the one with the eyes. I I don't like the pink or t uh, teal one as much. Um, only thing I don't like about it is that the eyes are really big and it's flat, colored eyes. Which, um, how do I explain this? It kind of strikes me as really soulless. <laughs> the eyes, like the look in the eyes. <laughs> I think that's the only thing about big eye sculpts that have small detail or rather lack thereof um yeah but i do like the color scheme of the of the thing the ones that you're talking about but i don't really love the the way the eyes are blank all right so that's that um, and now, um, let me just double check here if I missed anything. Just double checking, double checking. Looks good. Okay, and next thing he just does is attach the connector cable. Might be actually easier to attach it the other way around. So I'm actually gonna remove it from the other side and put it on the PCB side first and then attach it down onto the bottom of the case side um, next. Kind of like similar to you when you have like a keyboard upside down um, for MX boards and you have the daughter board. Easier if it's flat on the, on the ground. Okay, so attach it, right? So that's that. And now carefully lower. Oh, there is that um, cover. Um, this is the, the, uh, the, like the foam or whatever, right? Um, this can this can also go into the case. Uh, where's the wide blocker? That's the wide blocker. I guess. Is this supposed to have like a hole for the? Uh, should we do case case foam without the case foam? Cause it doesn't really matter. You can always make a hole on this. For the for the wire. <laughs> So that I can just slap it on like that. 
Kind of? Eh, let's do it without. I think they tend to sound pretty good even without, so... Alright. Also, there's a felt already, so... NBD. Okay, so that's the bottom case on now, and let's grab our remaining bolts. Hey bro, Dax, Dax XZ asks, Hey bro, I have a question. I have been asking and people told me that there's no almost differ no difference between TX tabs and my KBD R2 light tabs. What do you think? Um, I actually don't know. What do the KBD 67 R2 light tabs even look like? Um... I would say, I would say likely if they're clip-ins and I mean, if they work after you mod them, then that's good enough. But TX tabs um, are pretty nice too. So, but I mean, if your stabs currently work, like I don't think you need to bother replacing them. I don't know what the KBD67 R2 light stabs even look like though. So um, yeah, KBD67. I don't even know if um comes with screw in stuff, so they're different. Comes with uh, I guess Gadron branded um, screw in stabs. They don't sound that nice, TBH. Well, then you can always uh, consider replacing your stabs. That said, um, depends on whether you want to put put the work to do that. Yeah, why not? I mean. Um, I personally do prefer to like if it's like a like a board that I bought in the and like as it as it comes like it doesn't sound too good because of the staffs particularly then I yeah why don't you go ahead and um, consider rebuilding it and do it with new stabs fresh kind of starts fresh you know exactly what you're doing and you won't have to debate whether or not something's wrong because you can just you know, change it yourself. It's, mo it's mostly a matter of time. A, pair, uh, a set of stabs is like 20 bucks or so. So yeah. Plus the lube, I guess. So yeah, it can be a little bit more costly than that. But if you're if you're Okay with the DIY aspect, why not? Why not give it a shot? You know? All right, so that's that for this case. Let's get the stuff out of here. So that's that for the build, I think. So let's put on the keycaps and try it out. Um, actually, I'm gonna first, what I'm first gonna do really quick is I'm gonna just clean this up. So I'm just gonna return all the screws to their original places so that they don't get lost. So these three flat black screws were on for the PCB. So this is just in case like the original owner of the HKB wants to put everything back together to how it originally was. I like to just put the screws back to the same places just without the components. So those two, three screws and then um, this case just uh, place it on top and then put our um, these guys back. Um, oh wait, this screw I need to get rid of and then this guy one of the case screws here. And then here. And then lastly, here. So this one had a... Where's my little spudger here? In 
is fine. Okay. So now the case is as it was. Good to go. And we got our keycaps, um, remaining screws. I can actually just put back into the bag. Put that back. Just put it together. Organize everything that we have here. Let's see all my screwdrivers and my spudger. Get it out of the way. You missed the washer. Oh, uh, is it on the tray? Where are the washer at? this maybe it fell <laughs> it's okay um, I'll find it if I do <laughs> no biggie all right is it not a washer oh you mean this this is a screw an extra screw um, yeah but oh it's a part of the character on the desk mat <laughs> oh oh this Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it does look like a washer, though. That's totally fair. That is totally fair. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, maybe use this. We just wrap it around. Okay, so let's put on keycaps. Um, make sure this screw never makes it back into that bag. So I'm just gonna toss it in the garbage tray or whatever. Let's put keycaps back on. The very, very satisfying part of Topre always one of the things at least is the the iconic snap fit it feels so good to put keycaps on <laughs> it's one of those things just due to the structure of the cap i got a meow mix ad oh that's funny Speaking of the CEO, he is sleeping uh, somewhere, probably in the closet. I think he's he's been enjoying closet uh, sleeping area.
It's weird that CEO is meowing for food once. Uh, well, it's because it's not time yet. It's a little, still a little too early for it. But uh, within 30 minutes, he'll be doing that for sure. All right. So um, it wouldn't be a stream on my channel without artisans. So I got some Topri artisans here that we can try. If you guys have any picks that you like. Got some artisans <laughs> that are Topri compatible. Um, Uh, I'm thinking maybe just two different makers, so we can do we could do bro and alpha keycaps. We could do. Not gonna lie, I don't know anything about artisans. I mean, what looks cool is all that matters. Um, I think the bro looks nice because of the silver um, case. A little contrast though; it's a little darker than the than the actual case. So maybe I'll do that on the and then I'll do the alpha keycaps one page on the tilde the watermelon page oh we can do that actually we can do watermelon page watermelon sounds good actually if we're gonna do watermelon page let's go with let's go with something cuter so maybe let's do is this kind of kind of stuck a little too the ears are too too big mm, yeah let's do maybe watermelon page here and our murray here on the left defendant murray All right, so let's try it out. Um, I actually forgot that I should have tested the PCB right after I connected it, but I think it should be fine. Okay. Uh, let me just make sure. Okay, is it working? Okay, let's get the typing thing up. Good. All right, so let's get the music out of the way for a sec. And oh, I see this is switched. All right, and here we have our heavy grail um, in aerospace aluminum and silver. So this is this is it. Okay. So right now we got our airspace aluminum um, heavy grail. This is Topri 45 grams, um, pretty much stock HKB transplanted with the the plate. I lubed it with 32.4 trigosis, um, and the stats with 2.5. Um, and yeah, let's let's give it a shot though. So lightly loop with two, uh, 3204 and stabs with 205. And here's stock HKB caps, of course, and two artisans. All right, let me move the mic over. Okay. Give it a shot. 
yeah, the stock caps look excellent with the silver, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, okay. Let's give it a try. All right, good old Topri. Here we go. Try again. Ooh, I'm like, my hands are shaky. Sounds thick, thocky, true thock. <laughs> Wait, autocorrect, oof, uh, it's okay. It sounds thocky. Yeah, so this is also um, non-silence, which is why the keys sound like that. Very different from silence. Silence will really quiet down the upstroke. Um, and then this is very, pretty lightly looped. I use a pretty minimal amount of 3204, so it's kind of closer to stock, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like stock, which is actually kind of nice, at least in my opinion. Um, but the good thing about loop is like it's additive, so you can always put more. Uh, but if you over loop, then it's a lot harder to work with. All right, um, here are the stabs. I mean, the mods. Us. Um, can type it one more time? Kind of make so many mistakes. So, try it again. Kind of also want to try it a little bit longer, so. Sounds good. Haven't tried a looped on silence build. Oh, I see. Yeah, on silence definitely has a bit more of that stock kind of sound, especially kind of like from the upstroke. Um, it's a little bit. It's a decent bit louder actually. Uh, and the upstroke sound is a bit more like kind of like plasticky because of the impact of the of the sliders to the case. 
Sounds very stiff. It's not that stiff. Um, the plate itself is plastic, so it doesn't feel that stiff. But it does, you, you are effectively bolting it to the top. It's like top mount, sort of. Um, so yeah, like it, um, like the plate itself is solid and so you're, you're not really pushing against it that much. So, but, but it is still plastic, so it's not as, um, it's not as stiff feeling. You guys got your wise board desire this morning, so just a capsule backed up. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. You try any of the show aftermarket cases? Actually, no. I have not tried to show aftermarket cases. Uh, main reason being that I've personally not bought any, and uh, I don't think I've gotten any commissions for them uh, in particular. So that's that's the big reason. Oh, I don't know why it's uh, doing that, but there we go. S sixty HG is way better than Holy Grail. I mean, uh, Heavy Grail. I haven't tried that, but um, I mean, I'm, I've heard good things though from people who have it. So yeah. How does it feel compared to versus stock HKB? Um, it's actually pretty close to what the stock HKB case is like, at least in the sense of feel, because it does use a plastic plate. Like, um, so the stock case is this one, right? So the stock case will have an integrated um, ABS plate. So the material here is actually kind of similar in that sense, but the sound is different. Um, there's a, like a, it's a lot roomier here on the heavy grill. So um, you can kind of hear the the sound of the, the case a little bit, um, a lot more actually on the heavy grill. Whereas on the HKB, I think it kind of like kind of like taps out. So like this is, I have a, I have a stock-ish um, HKB hybrid here. HKB hybrid, I believe it's silenced though, so a bit different. I mean, a lot different. Right? Um, and this one's like. Right? Very, very different sound. Um, so I think it's a lot tighter in the plastic case. Uh, I don't know if I have one that is stock and unsilenced. Here. Oh, actually, I think I do. Uh, I think I do. Hold on. Give me a sec. I'll bring a stock unsilenced HKB. So for example, I have a different HKB here. There's a Pro 2. And this was looped like ages ago. Um, so this one is a Pro 2 case. And this is what it sounds like. A lot more plasticky sounding on uh, the in the OEM case, and you can definitely hear the resonance of the of the heavy grail, right? So in the case of the heavy grail, this one I'm pretty sure it's silenced. I think almost all my HKBs are silenced because that's my preferred spec. Um, so yeah, this is, this is pretty sure this is silenced too. I actually don't think I have an unsilenced HKB, HKB at the moment. Um, uh, let, let me think. No, no, I think they're all silenced either with KBD fans rings or Deskies rings, pretty sure, or OEM, RF, um, 
or like you know HKB hybrid type of um, silencing. Pretty nice though. Um, I like the OEM case a lot. Um, personally, the reason I haven't bought Heavy Grail and other aftermarket options is because it is an expensive endeavor, and more importantly, I already enjoy the OEM. So, but the look of like aftermarket housings is just so different. And if you like metal cases, then you know by all means, uh, it's a good proposition. Um. The obstruct didn't sound as jarring as my Leopold stock. Yeah, I don't I really don't like um, real force or Leopold stock experience. Like this, the upstroke is horrible. Um, so I like I just generally do prefer silenced um, and or at least looped. Uh, but yeah, stock is best low key. Uh, I will disagree. I will disagree. I can't stand especially like stabs are better now like if you buy hhkb pro classic or hybrid now the stabs stock experience is so much better these days but i think outside of that if i'm talking about the alphas i don't love it um the like the problem with stock for me is that when it goes on the upstroke you can hear like it's like it's like a small marble is bouncing like four times inside of a can um that's been lined with some sort of like I don't know plastic or something but you know it's like a brr, brr, like every key every keystroke um and I don't like that uh, it's just too I don't know it's just too, it's kind of loud it's kind of obnoxious for me so I don't really like stock um, I think close to stock is okay. Like this is looped lightly, so it kind of got rid of at least like some of the extra bit. But like this is about as much as I prefer to tolerate. Like this is pretty nice, I think. But I can completely stock, and especially like if the stabs are like old, like it's like on Pro Twos or like older real forces and stuff. Uh, it's horrible. Don't like it. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think I think typing wise, I do prefer. Um, OEM, yeah. Have you tried Hypro? Yeah, I have tried Hypro. Um, steel plane the RF is so off-putting. Yeah, I, I, there's reasons why I don't always use my RF. Um, so, but I do enjoy it still. It's, it's not after lubing, it's fine. But I think uh, stock I can't try. Like real force stock is just horrible. I, I really don't like it. Now I, the R twos, R threes, or whatever I think are much better nowadays though. Um, Um, Pro 3 Type S Best Stock HKB. Actually, no, yeah. Best Stock HKB is definitely the HKB hybrid currently. Like, no question. It's the stabs are really good stock now. Um, and like they do sales pretty often and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's hard to beat that. Um, stock experience wise. Yeah. Yeah, the integrated plane, the HKB sounds nice and chill. So, how, G hi, Gio, how are you doing? How are you? What have you been up to? I have an HFC sixty C. Yeah, I hope it's like lubed at least. But stock, bleh. no likey. Um, I don't like high pro though. By the way, SK Josie. Um, I used to have a lot of high pro. I had like Nisho, like one hundred four UK, blah 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 blah. You know all those like nice high pro caps or whatever but hyper is not for me it's too scooped um feel wise it's just too yeah it's too scooped it's just it's like the deep dish experience on the high pro is unique um not for me feels like it cups the fingers too much and it just kind of feels like i'm kind of stuck typing a key um so i don't like that it feels like inflexible to me so i, I really didn't enjoy it and so I, ultimately I sold all my Hypro um, a while, long time ago, like at this point it's been like five years ago now. Um, that said, yeah, the, it's, it's just like um, 
SPSA caps, right? Like SA profile stuff. It looks great. I mean, uh, look wise, it's amazing. It looks so sick. But, um, um, stock R1 RF. I mean, I can show you some other toolbar I have. Like, I show you the HKB Pro 2 over here. Like, I think my best HKB is my Pro 1 here. Uh, you can remove, I think the, yeah, I think that one's fine, but you can remove some of the, some of the ones that are too, too much. So this is my Pro 1, like yeah, my yellowed Pro 1. This is Silence with KVD fans, uh, rings, I think loop with Tribosis 3203, if I recall. It's been a long time since I looped this one, so it might actually sound kind of meh, um, especially the spacebar, but yeah, that's what this one sounds like, um. Let me stop the music too. Salary managed KB, yeah. So this is salary managed KB, indeed. Um, hold up. Okay. Spacebar is pretty good still. Does it smell like smoke? It does not smell like smoke. <laughs> it never did actually. It never smelled like smoke. I think I, I don't know. Um, this is this is the the real force I have here. This is variable domes, pretty sure. Variable domes, um, I think also Tribosis 3203 or 3204, I forget which one. Um, also looped ages ago. Staff might sound kind of bad, but here goes. Real Force, personally, okay. Not amazing, doesn't blow my mind. I don't like the steel plate that much. That said, looks great, looks amazing. Love the TKL look, can't beat that, right? And yeah, the colored mods are obviously are a nice touch here. Um, and then this is kind of like my magnum opus, so to speak. And funnily enough, I did not loop this one. Someone else did with, I think, Crytox oil, I think 107 or 106, I forget. Actually, it might have been 105. I don't remember. I need to check. Um, I have it written down. Oh, I have it written down here. Hold on. Let me let me double check. How much? What was the lube that they used for this one? Um, and I didn't do this one. So actually, funny thing is, almost always my personal boards are worse than the ones I build for other people. So, uh, this is my HKB Pro 1 uh, with no logo. And let me find the, what did, what was this loop with? Oh, here, HKB Pro. This one has Silence X rings. And this was looped with Crytox 105. Crytox 105 on this one. All right, so this is what it sounds like.
right? So this is this is the one I like the most. I think all I did when I got it was open it up to put the silencing rings because it didn't have them before and that was all I did and I closed it back up. Um, so yeah, funnily enough, I didn't do this job. It's great. Love it. Um, so yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, you sometimes get stuff that other people do and it's a lot better than what you would do. So it is what it is. Um, so that's the comparison. Um, yeah, some people do prefer unsilenced, so this is unsilenced, right? Um, you don't recommend 205 for the housings, huh? Um, you can. I personally don't, but because I prefer a lighter application of loop, personally. But you can do 205. I've done 205. Other people do 205 for um, alphas, and it's fine. It's going to be a more buttery. You're definitely going to feel more of the loop, but... And it's definitely gonna quiet down the the typing a uh, decent bit. Um, but personally, I'm like, whatever on it. Yeah, so this is. Very different. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone has a very different preference with these things. Um, for Topper, for me, I prefer the more silence experience. But oddly enough, for like MX, you know, I don't like silence switches at all. Um, just not my thing. So it's kind of interesting. Like Topper, I prefer silence. MX, I don't. Um, Alps and buckling spring as loud as and obnoxious it can be is totally fine with me. <laughs> Clicky, right? Or tactile. So. Yeah. Um, did you order the KV2? No, I didn't order a KV2 at all. So obviously I did not get the EC option for that either. Uh, do you happen to buy this from that one guy that bought a Pro 1 from Invis? No, don't think so. Don't think so. I don't know. I bought it from in this, I think back in the day, might have been right. I think it was in, in this had this board, uh, the the Pro One before. <sighs> Diego doesn't have the Hello Kitty board. Yeah, no. Uh, I actually don't think I. I think I stopped kind of getting a lot of Topper stuff by the time that was like out. It's more recent. Type K came out with the EC can I scooped immediately. Oh, nice, Opa Hyung. Very nice. This one was looped with 105. It always stuck out to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably the same one then. Do you still have the lily? Yes, I do have the lily still. Uh, it's over here. Actually, that one I have it around because I've been using it a lot too. But, you know, this is the lily. HKB layout, 7U, right? So this one has MX Brown, so very different, right? This with Jim K. So yeah, that's that's this one. Um, and I was close to getting the Lily, but just can't do GVs anymore. That's totally fair. I mean, I, I can't blame you. Um, I've been burned by GVs. I kind of get 
the reluctance. Um, that said, I think the ones, the GPs that fail, like it oftentimes has to do with the person, the vendor, that right, that thing, right? That precipitates all the events. It's, yeah, it's unfortunate that it still happens and has happened for a long time, but um, it still hasn't stopped me completely from entering group buys or pre-orders. Um, but yeah, if it's something that you can probably get stock I mean, um, like in stock later or like in the aftermarket, then you know, might as well just wait it out and get it then. No biggie. And yeah, uh, there should be a lot of uh, units ordered probably, so um, I don't think you'll struggle too much getting one. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it though. Uh, let's. Um, Show off the heavy rail again here. Oopsie, turned off the light by accident. Turn on, turn on the light back on. I have the remote here, that's why. <laughs> um, let's show this off. So here is the heavy rail um, up close. Really nice. The anodizing on the silver unit is like super impeccably smooth. I actually really like the anodizing quality of this. Um, just done so nicely. Um, it really gives that like apple silver type of look. Um, so really, really like that. So yeah, and then the bottom has the dip switches there. Powder coat white, I think, for the bottom case, uh, bottom base part. So good on the first day I scratch it near the port. Oh, <laughs> rip. Uh, at least it's the back portion. At least it's just the port portion, which is in the back and you don't see it, right? At least. Um, here it is from the side, you can kind of see what the cable connector may be a little bit better cables on the slight left here it's like that pretty good it's a nice look to be honest um here with nothing here that's gonna be for our thumbnail and then yeah so this one again if you want to take a look from the Side. Lovely, lovely board. I do like this taper. Taper, nice taper towards the front here, towards the like last bit of the case. It just kind of puts it perpendicular to the ground. I like, I like that little detail. It's uh, it's uh, it's the heavy rail is is a very nice looking case to be honest. Um, definitely not for those people who like really angular, really boxy cases, but. Um, I would say still pretty nice. All right, so I guess I will probably wrap it up here. Um, if you guys have anything else for me, let me know. But I think that's pretty much it for the stream today. Um, let me see if anybody else is streaming at the time. I actually don't know. I don't think so, but we can double check, right? Oh, Mr. CG Buin. Oh, that's rare. FC is streaming. That's also rare. Oh, that's right. Time difference. What's Mr. CG Buen up to? Non-solder keyboard tasks. Okay, so he's doing like looping and such. And then Mr. Epsilon is building an F284. Oh, sweet. We can also, we can raid Mr. FC if you wanted to see a MX build now. No, don't end. Then I'll have to be social. <laughs> Easter weekend things. <laughs> I wish I had the moolah for the ref retro refrigerator heavy grill. Yeah, people too rich over here. <laughs> it is expensive, TBH. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's raid Mr. Epsi. We don't get to catch him too often. Uh, 
let me go read. Hope you have a thocky Easter weekend. Or just happy thocky Easter weekend. Alright, I'm gonna go have empanadas, oh sounds great, I want some empanadas. Alright folks, thank you so much for coming by, um, I'll catch you guys on the next stream. Um, I should be building a Nuss Rocks Crush 65 next time. Um, that was uh, that's a board sent out from a Vietnamese maker, so I'll be building that on the next stream probably this coming week all right folks have a good easter um have a good um rest of your weekend i'll catch you guys later bye uh do you go have completely missed stream but nice looking rubber dome thank you mr pekian take it easy bye